If you have a website, you have to install some analytics tool on it. That way you will know what visitors are doing on your website and where are they coming from. In this video, I will explain how to set up GA4 and five things you must to configure every time you create a new property. To create a Google Analytics 4 property, you have to go to analytics.google.com, sign in with your Google account, and then you might be asked to create a property right away. Or if you already have some properties, then log into any of them and you might see a view that might look something like this, or maybe it will look something different, but basically you need to keep looking for a gear icon or admin in the bottom left corner. Click it and then click create property. This will start a Google Analytics 4 property creation process. First, you need to name the property. If you plan to track just one website with this property, then you can enter the name of the website here. If you plan to track multiple websites with the same property, then you could, for example, here enter the name of the business or of the company or maybe product line. I mean, whatever suits you. This is just purely for internal use. So you're free to enter here anything you want. I will enter demo website, for example. Then select the reporting time zone. This will affect how data is displayed in your reports. So make sure to select the correct country and then correct time zone. If the company operates in multiple time zones, then I would suggest that you select the time zone of your backend system. And in this case, for example, if you're working with the e-commerce website, then I would use the same time zone that you have configured in that e-commerce platform, because then your sale numbers will match better. And then the same applies to US currency. If your website operates in multiple currencies, then you will still need to select the most important one or the main one, because you cannot easily switch currencies later down the road. So if I select the US dollar here and later in the future, I start sending purchases with euros, Google Analytics will do the conversion from euros to US dollars, then click next. And then you can either answer these questions or just click create. And now you have created the property. The next step is to configure the data collection. How are you going to send data from your website or your mobile apps to Google Analytics for? In this tutorial, I will be focusing on website tracking. That is why I am selecting web. And then here I can enter the URL of my website. If you plan to track multiple websites and multiple domains in the same property, then enter any of those domains here. In reality, this domain right here does not matter that much because even if I enter mywebsite.com, but I start sending data from another website, that will still work just fine. So I will enter here, let's say demowebsite.com, and then I will enter the stream name. Click create stream. Once you do that, then you will need to install Google Analytics 4 on your website. If you're using Google Tag Manager, then you will need this measurement ID. And when you install Google Tag Manager on your website, then you will need to create a new tag for Google Analytics 4. If you have no idea what Google Tag Manager is, but you want to start using it, then I will post a link to a tutorial below this video where I explain how to install Google Tag Manager. But if you have already Google Tag Manager installed on your website, then click new tag configuration, GA4 configuration, and then copy this measurement ID, paste it here, and set the tag to fire on all pages. If you're not using Google Tag Manager, then I will soon explain other options that you have. Now let's name this tag, save it, and then you can click Submit to publish these changes, and then Google Analytics will be installed on your website. Another option is to use a thing called GTag, which is a tracking code of Google Analytics 4 that your developer should install directly on a website. You can find instructions on GTag by clicking View Tag Instructions, then install manually, and then copy this code and give it to your developer to install it directly on the source code of the website. If you're using some popular website builder, then you can switch to this option and then choose one of these options right here. Also, it is possible that you're using some content management system where you just need to enter the tracking ID of your Google Analytics 4 property. And you, again, you can do that by copying this, entering it somewhere in your content management systems settings, and then hit save and Google Analytics will be installed on your website. Of course, that system must support Google Analytics 4. Once you create the Google Analytics 4 property, create a data stream, and then install Google Analytics 4 on a website, 
you should eventually start seeing some data incoming in real-time reports. To do that, go to reports and then real-time. Eventually, you should start seeing some numbers right here. If you struggle with the installation and you want to learn more, then check the description of this video where I have some additional tutorials. However, we are not done yet because every time you create a new property, you have to complete these five things because they are necessary for every property. To do that, let's go back to the admin panel. So click right here, admin. And then the first thing that you want to do is go to data settings, data retention, and then switch from two months to 14 months. This will affect your custom reports that are called explorations and they are available under the explore section. If you select just two months, which is the default, you will be able to work in those custom reports only with the data from the last two months. But if you want to analyze up to 14 months, then you need to switch to this and click save. If you're going to track multiple websites with the same property, which is a fairly common use case, then you need to go to data streams, click your website data stream, then scroll down and select configure tag settings. Then click configure your domains and enter all the domains that you're tracking with this property. So let's say that I am tracking two websites. One of them is domain1.com and the other is another website.com. So if you track, let's say five websites with the same property, enter all those five domains right here. You don't have to enter each subdomain like this or like this. It's enough to enter just the main domain and it will apply to all subdomains as long as you have selected contains. When you do that, click save. Then you don't want to pollute your data with the internal traffic, or in other words, data coming from your employees or yourself. That is why you should click in the same window, show all, and then click define internal traffic. Then here you should enter the IP addresses of your colleagues, or maybe let's say your office that you want to exclude from your reports. So click create, enter, let's say the name of the location, for example, main office, and then enter the IP address right here. Obviously you should enter the real IP address, then click create, Okay, this is not working, so let's try this. Maybe this will work. Oh, I realized that it has selected the IP address range, so instead you should select IP address contains or begins with or equals, and then click create. Then you have to go to the settings of the Google Analytics 4 property, and then click data settings, data filters, and then click on internal traffic, set it to active, and save and activate filter. Now you are excluding your internal traffic as well. Then another thing that you might want to consider is related to unwanted referrals. Basically, if there are some websites that you don't want to see in your traffic reports, then you can exclude them by defining unwanted referrals. Let me explain this. So go back to data streams in the admin panel, go back to your web data stream, then scroll down, configure tag settings, then show all, list unwanted referrals, and then enter that unwanted referral here. One of the most popular examples are payment gateways. So for example, if a visitor lands on your website, wants to make a purchase, then goes to paypal.com to make a purchase, and then comes back to your order confirmation page, you might start seeing sometimes paypal.com in your traffic acquisition reports. So if you don't want to see that, then enter that paypal.com domain right here. And this might apply also to some other payment gateways that you're using and that redirect visitors to third party websites. When you configure the list of unwanted referrals, then click save. And then the final thing is related to the default session timeout. By default in Google Analytics 4, the session duration is 30 minutes. As long as I am active, that session is extended. But if I stop doing anything on the website, after 30 minutes, that session will end. But usually people right now, they browse not as fast. I mean, they might open your website, that tab will open somewhere right here, and then the visitor might be distracted, and then later that visitor might come back after one hour, maybe two hours, to continue the task. By default, that one hour timeout will start a new session once the visitor comes back. But if you want to continue that session, 
instead of starting a new one, you might want to consider changing the session timeout. So you can click adjust session timeout right here, and then you can change it from 30 minutes to something else. Usually I include at least several hours, like three, four hours. So you might want to do something like that. Also, there is another timer where I suggest you take a look at, and this is the engaged sessions definition. By default, if the visitor lands on your website and stays for 10 seconds, that is considered as an engaged session. But honestly, like in my opinion, are 10 seconds really enough? Well, I would say no. So I would change this something to maybe 30 seconds or 60 seconds. Well, this is up to you to decide. But definitely, in my opinion, 10 seconds are too low. So do at least 30 seconds right here and then click Save. And that is how you should set up GA4 property on your website. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.